Good morning, folks. Two special videos the last two nights. We've got a story this morning following up our deconstruction of NASA's article last night and a whole lot more starting at our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun pretty quiet. Coronal holes likely at too high a latitude to affect Earth. Active region is quiet as it's just the fields, no sunspots beneath them. The solar wind is calming as well. We took two coronal hole streams that were slow to onset and reached moderate intensity only. In purple, you see the plasma speed has begun to come back down off its modest peak. And geomagnetic conditions are calm as well. But we did get a fun little sun diving comet coming in over the last 48 hours. It is a Kreutz family comet, and it began breaking up and evaporating in the solar wind well before it made it to the corona. Up first in the articles is a new plan to bring the best computer programming to solar flare prediction and the prediction of the severity of solar storms. Excellent recognition in this article of both the major risk the sun presents, even more so now while Earth's magnetic field is weakening, and the ways they can try to spot patterns in sparse data and try to progress forward. MIT confusing the quaternary period with earlier epochs in Earth's history up next. Yes, the heating bias of the planet held firmly from about 66 million years ago all the way to about 5 million years ago. So yeah, the majority of that time period. But the problem with this is that since about 5 million years ago, and definitively in the last 2 or 3 million years, the Earth has utterly changed faces and has been repeating a glacial cycle very regularly for quite some time. This period gets different names like Quaternary or Pleistocene in the literature because it represents a completely different period and character of the planetary behavior. By the way, the Quaternary period is the last 2.8 million years. It's made up of the Pleistocene and the Holocene, which flips at the last magnetic excursion, Gothenburg, about 12,000 years ago. Plasma cosmology fans, perk up a moment. We've seen dozens of papers on galactic plane alignments, galactic jet alignments, spin alignments, and what's really kept it from going 100% mainstream within the field is a lack of an explanation for what most dark matter proponents consider to be impossible. By the way, it's funny they think that way of actual observations while clinging to a thing they've spent $100 billion trying to find, with zero success. But anyway, we're talking about this paper, aren't we? These guys found a way to explain it, and yes, it's exactly what the majority of the alternative theorists have proposed. The intergalactic magnetic field. And oh, I shouldn't really be giving gold away like this to such a field of shillery, but dark matter scientists you might do well to investigate whether those same fields are impacting the large-scale anisotropies in the density, expansion, magnetization, and early spin of the universe, those other things giving you guys nightmares. Now, we're going to wrap our top story around the front and back of a peek at our letter in last night's video. Obviously, the title of this paper gets you in the door as an observer, and they are investigating the wide array of elements of Earth's magnetic field that are needed for biological life and which can provide challenges during things like a magnetic excursion. This was one of the main points I wanted to express in that letter. So far, over 35,000 of you have read our open letter to the geophysical community, and half did not come from YouTube or one of our websites. The letter is linked near the top of both Space Weather News and Suspicious Observers, so that means the other half came from you sharing it. Studies usually focus on climate change or radiation, but not both, never including the navigation and other electromagnetic biology connections known to exist, never including the extra UVB effect on things like plants and plankton, the foundations of the food chain, and never combining those with the risk of an electrified society to geomagnetically induced current. So, as you hopefully saw last night, NASA's climate crew figured, hey, magnetism, geology, astrophysics, that's easy. Let's write an article about how they don't matter. Folks, I've won two fights against Harvard astrophysicists, trounced numerous papers appearing in major journals, but I don't think I've ever whooped someone as bad as NASA last night, and it's not me. It's just how bad the article was. If you didn't see it or the IPCC debunking the night before, need to catch up on that before the weekend. And so we are back at the article, the top story for today. They may not have touched the grids going down or the connections between critical cardiac and psychological parameters and the solar wind, solar flares, or geomagnetic storms, but they hit the climate change, the radiation, and the navigation. And that makes this paper one of the most complete examinations on the topic. 
It is precisely what we were asking for in our letter, for the broader array of topical coverage and importance of key issues. And amidst the praise I can give, let's remember, we're about to watch our field do a fast flip again here to end the Holocene. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our start close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.